Well, good evening, everyone. I hope you're doing well. And this is your Royal Daily News for October 19th, 2022. In Dar es Salaam, Her Majesty Queen Maxima of the Netherlands, in her capacity as the United Nations Secretary General Special Advocate for Inclusive Finance for Development, continued her two-day visit to Tanzania. This morning, Her Majesty the Queen participated in a roundtable meeting held under the theme National Financial Inclusion Framework, a public-private stakeholders initiative, with the Governor of the Bank of Tanzania, Mr. Florenz Luwaga, and representatives from the private sector. During the meeting, Her Majesty the Queen heard their, quote, thoughts on how innovation can support greater digital financial and economic inclusion, end quote. Her Majesty the Queen also participated in a brief meeting during the Generation Equality Forum, GEF, with a small group of the GEF Council to learn more about their work and goals related to inclusive finance. Thereafter, Her Majesty the Queen met with the President of Tanzania, Miss Samia Hassan, at the State House. In Den Haag, His Majesty King Willem Alexander of the Netherlands received the first copy of the book Heroes of Hydrogen at the Palais House Ten Bosch. According to RVD, the book contains a collage of important hydrogen projects in Europe. Quote, Photographer Justin Jin captured these projects with the aim of highlighting the importance of green hydrogen and making it accessible to a wide audience. The book will be officially launched at the Hydrogen Europe's Autumn Market Reception during the European Hydrogen Week from October 24th through 28th in Brussels. Hydrogen plays an important role in the future zero-emissions energy system. The Netherlands is one of the hydrogen gateways to Europe, and thanks to its extensive process industry, geographical position, and infrastructure, it can play a leading role in the European transition." End quote. After His Majesty received the copy of the book, he held an audience with representatives of Hydrogen Europe about the role of hydrogen in the energy transition, the impact of projects that have already started in Europe, and the challenges that lie ahead. This morning, in the province of Walloon, Brabant, Their Majesties King Philippe and Queen Mathilde of the Belgians began their one-day official visit to the region. The day began in the municipality of Rixensat to visit the headquarters of the pharmaceutical company GSK. The company was the first to develop the malaria vaccine. Thereafter, Their Majesties visited the Fetacel shelter, where they met with residents, staff, and volunteers. The Fetacel shelter is a facility where, quote, unsupervised minor girls who are pregnant and or accompanied by young children, end quote. The day ended with a visit to the town hall, where they held a meeting with local residents. In the afternoon, His Majesty the King held an audience with Mrs. André Dumont, who turned 100 on September 5th at Chateau de Lacan. Mrs. Dumont, whose nickname in the opposition was Nadine, helped Allied forces pilots who were caught in occupied territory during World War II to reach England via Belgium, France, and Spain. Mrs. Dumont was unfortunately betrayed, arrested, and deported to Ravensbrück and Mauthausen, where she was finally freed in April 1945. Last evening in Kirchberg, their Royal Highnesses Hereditary Grand Duke Guillaume and Hereditary Grand Duchess Stephanie of Luxembourg attended the screening of a new documentary entitled, well, roughly translated from Luxembourgish, From Soil, Construction, and Organic Farming, directed by Mr. Tom Alsech. The documentary tells the story of rural farmers in Luxembourg learning about the importance of organic farming. On the eve of their 10th wedding anniversary, New photos were released of the hereditary Grand Ducal couple. The images were taken during their recent interview with the Luxembourg Broadcasting Network, RTL. In the interview, the couple discussed their civil and religious wedding and much more. If you're interested in watching the interview in Luxembourgish, in the description box below, I will leave a direct link to the RTL interview. 
This morning in Luxembourg City, the latest issue of Telecran was released with Her Royal Highness Grand Duchess Maria Theresa of Luxembourg gracing the cover. In the magazine, the Grand Duchess gives an exclusive interview whereupon she discusses her charity work, including the charity she founded in 2019, Stand, Speak, Rise Up. And she also talks about her family and much more. In Monacoville, His Serene Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco became an honorary member of the National Federation of Maritime Merit during an intimate ceremony at the Palais Princière. Last evening in Monte Carlo, the Sovereign Prince attended the 15th anniversary celebrations of Novotel Monaco. It's a hotel. On Monday in Monacoville, His Serene Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco viewed the exhibition entitled Polar Encounters by Monegasque artist and president of the AS Monaco Association, Mr. Michel Aubery, at the Musée Oceanographique de Monaco. According to the newspaper Monaco Tribune, the 40 paintings on display showcase the, quote, diversity of species found at the poles, but also the necessity to preserve them and protect their natural habitat aspects that are incredibly important to the sovereign and his foundation." End quote. In Paris, His Royal Highness Prince Joachim of Denmark, as a defense attaché, attended the Danish Export Association, Naval Team Denmark, and Danish Maritimes Reception during the 2022 Euro Naval Defense Technology Fair held at the Bourget Exhibition Center. According to a press release via Euronaval, held every two years, over 450 exhibitors and 25,000 professional visitors meet at the fair to enjoy a showcase that is at the cutting edge of innovation. Quote, naval and aircraft, defense infrastructure and naval architecture, weapons and ammunition, maritime security, communication and training services are all a part of the comprehensive assortment. A recent addition to the show is the Cyber Naval Hub, which features the latest advancements in cybersecurity. End quote. In Timpu, Her Majesty Queen Jetson of Bhutan sent a video message to those attending the 2022 Bhutan Climate Action Conclave. The Bhutan Climate Action Conclave is a quote, conclusion of the first edition of the Snowman Race. End quote. Outside of Amman, His Royal Highness Crown Prince Al Hussein bin Abdullah II of Jordan visited the Southern Military Region Command. Upon his arrival, the Crown Prince was received by the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Major General Yusuf Hanetti. During his visit, the Crown Prince was briefed on a number of operational, logistical, and training-related issues concerning the region's personnel and their duties. The Crown Prince also conveyed His Majesty the King's greetings to the region's personnel and to all those serving in the Jordan Armed Forces Arab Army. The Crown Prince also honored a number of personnel serving in the region who were the top achievers in advanced military training courses, commending their readiness and professionalism. In Muscat, his Highness Saeed Theazan bin Haitham al Saeed of Oman, in his capacity as the Minister of Culture, Sports, and Youth, attended the celebration of the Women's Club for Sports and Cultural Creativity on the occasion of the 2022 Omani Women's Day and the inauguration of the club's identity and logo, held at the Al Bustan Palace Hotel. Thereafter, the Crown Prince attended the opening of the symposium entitled Women's Symposium for Sports and Cultural Creativity. Meanwhile, His Majesty Sultan Haitham bin Tariq al Sayyid of Amman issued Royal Decree No. 66, 2022, on the issuance of a first class license to Amman Technology Infrastructure Company for the construction and operation of inactive infrastructure for telecom towers. In Frankfurt, their Majesties King Felipe VI and Queen Letizia of Spain concluded their official state visit to Germany. This morning, Their Majesties attended Day 2 of the 2022 Frankfurt Book Fair, held at the Messe Frankfurt Congress Center. 
During their visit, their majesties met with various exhibitors at the famous fair. Thereafter, His Majesty the King visited the European Central Bank. Upon his arrival, His Majesty was warmly welcomed by the President of the European Central Bank, Ms. Christine Lagarde. After a photo op for the press and the signing of the Book of Honor, His Majesty the King held a meeting with the President of the European Central Bank. Meanwhile, Her Majesty Queen Letizia of Spain visited the Cervantes Institute, where she was warmly welcomed by the Minister of Culture and Sports, the Director of the Cervantes Institute, the Council General of Spain in Frankfurt, and the Director of the Cervantes Institute in Frankfurt. After formal greetings and a photo op for the press, Her Majesty the Queen participated in a roundtable meeting with various representatives from the Cervantes Institute. In London, His Majesty King Charles III of the United Kingdom held an audience with the President of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, His Excellency Felix Antoine Chalumbo, at Buckingham Palace. In Stockholm, her Majesty Queen Sylvia of Sweden presided over the presentation of scholarships from the Freemason Children's House Foundation to researchers in pediatrics for studies of children's health and diseases. The distribution was rounded off with a lecture by Professor Eric Berenger, who talked about his research on hearing loss in newborns and new methods to develop early communication skills. Yesterday morning, His Royal Highness Prince Carl Philip of Sweden participated in Test Day for the award winners of the Prince Carl Philip Racing Cup held at the Gellerson Arena. Last evening in Stockholm, Their Majesties King Carl Gustav and Queen Sylvia of Sweden attended the 2022 Birgit Nielsen Prize Award Ceremony held at the Stockholm Concert Hall. The winner of the prize went to famous cellist Mr. Yo-Yo Ma, who became the first instrumentalist to receive the prestigious award. In Bangkok, Their Majesties King Rama X and Queen Sothida of Thailand, accompanied by Her Royal Highness Princess Vera Vanavari of Thailand, along with other members of the royal family, attended Day 2 of the presentation of the Royal Catherine Robes Offering Ceremony held at the Temple of Wat Bowan. And by the way, I just want to say thank you to viewer Krishna for correcting me on the pronunciation of Her Majesty's name. For a long time, I've been calling her Sathida, but it's actually Sothida. I think that's right. If it's not Krishna, please let me know. Anyway, thank you. In aristocrat and nobility news, on Monday, Lady Amelia and Lady Eliza Spencer, daughters of the ninth Earl Spencer and nieces of the late Diana, Princess of Wales, attended the 2022 Golden Heart Award Ceremony in New York City. And finally, on this day in royal history, in 1963, His Royal Highness Prince Laurent of Belgium was born. The prince is the second son of Their Majesties Emeritus King Albert I and Emerita Queen Paula of Belgium. The prince is also the younger brother of His Majesty King Philippe of the Belgians. In 2003, Prince Laurent married British-born Miss Claire Combs at the Cathedral of St. Michael and St. Gadula in Brussels. Today, the couple have three children and are very happy together. Unless Prince Laurent does something to annoy her, such as being incredibly disrespectful by talking on his phone, falling asleep, or wanting to sit down during the National Day military parade celebrations. So with that, happy birthday, Prince Laurent, and thank you for being incredibly entertaining for all of us royal watchers all of these years. No, really, happy birthday. <laughs> and there you have it. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will be back tomorrow on Thursday, October 20th with all the latest royal news. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful Wednesday evening and a great day tomorrow. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Okay, take care everyone. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.